eight, that means we are just on the halfway to the course. So after the, this one, maybe we have uh, eight chapter left and then hopefully we can learn smoothly and then try to finish in this book very well. And then that might be the great things to great achievements for great, I would say great achievement for us in this year, one of the great achievements in this year, I guess. Okay, so uh, let's start then. Okay, so you guys are already typing in the start. So yeah, I would say let's start. So sorry, that's not directed at you. That's so that it yeah. helps John for the YouTube video so he doesn't have to cut them. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. So anyway, so today I'm going to try to cover chapter eight like a linear regular, uh, regression function. Uh, in fact, this is a pretty big chapter because uh, uh, when I downloading the PDF, I usually studying in PDF books, not in the screenshots, but when I looking at the PDFs and then the chapter actually has uh, close to the 50 pages. So it's quite big. So I'm gonna try to explain as much as I can. But the thing is, I personally think that we can split this chapter into the two parts, like a for two, we're gonna study this chapter for two weeks. Cause, because, because in this book, this chapter is the only chapter I think that, uh, uh, I, I, that I think uh, handles with the nonlinear relationships. So, I'm gonna try to uh, try to cover as much as possible, but the thing is, I'm gonna try to explain also very slowly to so that we can understand the whole contents better, rather than try to rather than focusing on the wrapping up the chapter within a week. Does that sound good to you? Okay, so. I'm gonna start. So chapter eight is a nonlinear function. So as we know, until to chapter seven, we always thinking about the relationship of X and Y, like uh, Y is also continuous and then uh, X is also continuous, right? And also those two relationships is a quite, uh, is a linear. Like uh, X, when the X increases, Y increases in a constant uh, constant rate, right? That's the what linear regression function is for, right? So actually that means when whenever X is changes, Y actually changing in a constant, uh, uh, as a constant uh, slope, like, a, like a based on the regression coefficients, right? But the thing is, in this case, we're gonna deal with a nonlinear relationship, which means maybe what if uh, when X changes, Y does not change it in the constantly, in uh, as a constant, or maybe when X changes, Y actually changes changes exponentially or some kind of a polynomial kind of way. So these are the nonlinear regression is for. So this one is, this chapter actually deal with the whole these, these kind of, uh, everything about the, this kind of a situation. Okay, so let's move to the next page. Okay, so 8.1 is just kind of a general strategy for the modeling the nonlinear regression functions. So, okay, we, we actually have a handle with uh, that uh, English score kind of a data set so far. So, we also revisit this one uh, for again to to understand the linear relationships. So what this one is actually about is like uh, saying that we're gonna try to uh, try to calculate the students students and teacher ratio in here as a size, and also in here we also try to try to make a average score for this. And then uh, when we try to looking at the income and score, it looks like a pretty, uh, pretty positively related when you calculate this one. 
because that means when the x axis is income, right? And then y axis is a score. This actually based on the this this correlation relationship actually shows us about the there is a, I don't know how much it is, but the thing is there might be the these kind of a relationships, like a linear relationship. So that means when the incomes increases, the the score is also gonna be better for the students with a, with a high income neighborhood or high income family, etc. But but the thing, the problem is when we actually looking uh, looking at the kind of uh, uh, hold on, it's, uh, yeah. When we when we looking at the down to the bottom, like uh, uh okay, here. So when you're looking to the bottom, like uh, when we actually try to. Uh, try to do the linear, try to develop the just simple linear regression model as we have, as we have done so far on this chapter seven. And then I try to plotting the, these graphs, okay? We can get the, this plot, right? So X axis is the kind of like district income in thousand dollar. And then uh, Y axis is a test, test score. So we actually, Draw the this kind of a red line to represent that this is a linear regression line, right? Uh, regression line. So as you can see, we can actually draw the one single line that actually minimize about the uh, uh, least square errors. So these are the line. But the thing is, when we actually try to looking at the, these shapes. It it does not it it does not seems to be linear. It seems to like a, a little bit like a this non-linear like a curvy line kind of a relationship, which means when we are looking at the district with the lower income, our our regression line is the overestimate about the score compared to the actual observation, as you can see here, right. And then when we are looking at the in the middle level of the income, our regression line is uh, underestimate about the actual observation, right? Actual observation is much larger uh, than the actual predicted linear line. And then when we go up to the high level, it is also under it seems to be a still underestimate, right? Here. Most of the high income observation is uh, under the under the regression line. That means predicted linear regression predictive value is uh, overestimates about the score compared to the compared to the uh, actual observation value. Is that correct? So so in that case what we can what we can tell us from the this plot is this single linear line which is the this red line does not does not successfully effectively explain the variations in our observation variance, right? That means this is gonna be R square is quite low, right? So it does not fit very well. Cause we already saw that this is more like a, this kind of a curvy line relationship, not the uh, which is the non-linear relationship compared to the this single straight linear relationship, right? So we have to think about how we can develop this kind of a model because this curvy line fits much better to the straight line kind of a linear relationship uh, line. So that's the how we can try to do here. So, and then uh, here is the thing. So to uh, to try to reflect the, these kind of a curvy relationships, what we can do is in here, like uh, 
we can try to add in another, another parameter, which is the income square, like a polynomial kind of a regression, regression factors, regressions. So actually by adding this uh, poly, like a, like a square of the income as a new parameter, that is actually called quadratic relation model, which is the quadratic means that we're gonna add in another, another uh, variable called the income square, right? So by using this one, we can actually join the sum of the, this, like a Kirby, poly, uh, Kirby, Kirby quadrat quadratic line to, to reflect uh, to fit, fit the, our model to the observation. So, so when we go down, right here, so we can do the, do the quadrant model. So in R to try to reflect the, that uh, square or square or cubic square of the of the value, we actually uh, set up the, these kind of a calculation in a i functions, like a i and with the parentheses, and then a, and then a, you can actually set uh, some of the value, uh, like a value, like an object name, and then you can power by maybe here is a number, like a power number. Right, so this is how this one is looked like. So by doing this, we can actually express express these components at the top. And then when we are looking at the coefficient test, or maybe we can just try to try to do the summary summary quadratic. quadratic model, we can see these kind of a uh, coefficient to result. Actually, the reason why they actually try to use in the coefficient test functions is because they wanted to do the variance and covariance matrices with uh, to get the more like a robust, robust regression, regression model, you know, because the type is H HC1 is we're going to try to estimate the our our regression coefficients based on the based on the no penalty or no weighting factor gonna be gonna be affected to the chain these coefficients which means more like a robust regression model right so these are the kind of result and then as you can see here in uh, the square of the income also has a highly significant in this case, so when we based on the these kind of a regression coefficients, we can actually develop the these kind of a single equation as a kind of a predictive or fitted, like a fitted regression equations, right? So that's the how this one works. Actually, actually the learning how to do that in R is a very simple because uh, the only thing we have to do is uh, just kind of uh, using the i functions and then adding the another parameter to the LM, fun LM functions and then that's gonna be uh, and i gives us to the another answers for this one right but the thing is when we try to now when we try when we try to drawing the plot based on the this equations, as you can see here, we can first, we can try to make a scatter plot here, as we can see in the these blue dots. And then, and then actually so far, we actually use the AB line function because uh, we only have a linear functions, linear regression line. So by linear regression line can be uh, visualized by using the this AV line function in R, 
But the thing is, when we have a kind of more like a nonlinear line, like a curvy line, we have to use the another function called lines. This one actually allows us to draw the line for the nonlinear lines, both the linear and nonlinear lines. So how this one does is first one is we have to make a sort of the uh, sort of the, this income as an ID, because that means we actually assign the, these things as an ID. And then we can fit it our model based on the this income level ID, and then connecting the all of the these X and Y kind of a uh, continuous predicted relationship as a line, like a color to the left. So that's the, we produce the, this, like a, this nonlinear curvy line as a red line at the bottom. So as you can see here, when you're looking at the black linear regression line and then a red nonlinear regression line, you actually very easily figure out that red one like a linear curvy line fits much better than the straight linear regression line, right? It is it is a quite quite has a much less linear square error compared to the black solid line in the plot. Does that uh, does that make sense? Do you have uh, any questions so far? Anything? Any comments? So everyone understand about the, what this is about, right? Because uh, in this in eight point one, we try to uh, try to do the linear uh, linear learn, relation regressions. We actually use the what is called the quadratic line uh, quadratic regression model by adding adding the square of income into into the uh, into our model, right? Okay, so. Now let's move to the 8.2. 8.2 is a little bit more complicated because 8.2 is a more like a general approaches to do to represent or fit the linear relation line relationships into the, our regression model. So, so first one in the 8.2 chapter is actually talk about the polynomial one because uh, in the previous chapter we actually developed the quadratic regression model called y equal beta zero and beta one, x one plus beta two, x, x one and x one square plus L term, right? This is the basic function called the quad, uh, quadratic line, right? Quadratic regressions. But what, when we say about the polynomial means, we have to try to thinking about the, what if, there is a kind of a so many, so many uh, uh, square or cubic kind of a powered, uh, powered variable. That's the we can has, has to be gen, uh, generalized about the, this kind of a relationship. That's the what polynomial kind of means. So polynomial, as you can see in the formula in here, polynomial means we have to keep having the set of the, this square and maybe uh, cubic, et cetera, and then uh, keep having the, this kind of R power, R power the variable as a new parameters added to the regression model. So whenever we have uh, this kind of uh, arbitrary degree for the power, power, power the uh, very power product of the variable, we can keep adding these kind of things into our model. And then uh, that is what we call the polynomial regression equations. Okay. So in that case, in, in here, for example, we can also think about the cubing model, which is like a degree, uh, polynomial degree is the three in income. So in that case, we can actually easily, easily to represent about the poly, by using the these function like a poly functions, right? And then when you're looking at here, same thing, like a linear regression model. But when we try to, in the previous chapter, when we try to do the quadratic model, we actually do the LM, like a score, 
and then like uh, income plus uh, I and income square, right? To, to get a model, but this kind of a set of the equation is a very, very uh, not efficient kind of coding approaches, right? Maybe what if we have or maybe not the cubing model, maybe what about our degree of the power is four or five, et cetera. We have to keep listing these things forever, right? Depending on the degree of the things. But by using the, these poly functions, we can actually simplify this kind of uh, process. The only thing we have to do is uh, just kind of define the what, are, what is the our set of the degree. Oh, so in this case, we have a degree of the three. That means it is actually same for the income plus income square plus income and, and cubic. Maybe when we translate this one in R is the income plus I income power two plus I functions income power by three, right? In R. So compared to the these poly functions and uh, this one, in actually these kind of uh, just kind of listing up, listing, listing up the all of the parameters into as a formula is a very, very uh, complicated and uh, not, effic not efficient. So that's the reason why we use the poly functions to represent the more than the three or four or five, whatever degree we have. Okay. So actually Abdul has, Abdul raised the question, uh, type the question in the chatting here and then uh, are there tests to, to determine the presence or nonlinearity for our regression model, or should we just look for the presence of the polynomial log and product access? Okay, so that one is actually very hard to judge, you know. Actually, in 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 at the bottom, I'm gonna start uh, explain this one later. But the only thing that we can most intuitive way we can do is just the drawing. Uh, just the kind of a drawing the our scalar plot first. And then a that scalar plot looks like this, like a low, more like a curvy kind of a looks like this, depending on the depending on the, our shape of the that scalar plot looks like. We can have actually thinking about the linear and the linear. Okay. And then when we think about the, like this case, when we think about the nonlinear is the, the, the best way we can represent this kind of a scalar plot. That, and then we have to iterating this kind of a process. Like uh, we can actually try to poly and R is uh, uh, like a two, which is the quadratic. And then we also testing the same thing, but like a cubic, et cetera. Keep doing this. And then when we, whenever we have a, this set of the model, we have to testing this one. Uh, in the later, we gonna, I'm gonna try to cover about the function call, cause when we, in the, in the previous chapter, we actually use the function called the hypothesis test. Did you remember this function? This function actually allows us to to the uh, testing the testing the our regression coefficients is uh, kind of uh, significant or not across to the model. Okay. Does that understand? So in that in that case, by using the, this kind of a test function. And then we can actually try to testing about the significant of the coefficients to each other. Or maybe we can also testing about the F statistic test 
to figure out the which one is the much better fit, like uh, like uh, calculating the differences in the chi square, you know, and then with the degree of the freedom is the uh, the difference of the number of parameter like r minus one, and then we can testing the this chi square, and then we can try to figure out the which model actually gave us the better result. That's the, that's the thing we can do. And then I'm gonna explain that one more in detail in the later in this chapter, okay? So as you can, uh, as you can see here, so we already, uh, we already cover uh, cover the this one, and then uh, yeah, here here is the function like a like a linear hypothesis. Okay, here. Okay, because uh, uh, when we looking at the top, actually we develop the cubing model functions in here degree of the three, that means actually poly function actually allows us to the prepare for the income and income square and income uh, cubic like this. And then by using the, this kind of R hypothesis matrices, this one actually allows us to the which one gonna be we have to testing it. So actually the first one is the intercept. And then the second one is a just kind of a linear one. And then the third one is actually quadratic. And then the final one is the cubic, right? In this case, because we actually have a degree of the three, right? What is the number one in the third, third column and then the fourth column in this case? This means that in the first case, we only testing about the quadratic quadratic functions that x square uh, that x square x square functions, and then uh, that re re uh, regression coefficient is the significant or not. And then the second law is actually testing about the cubic functions, cubic. Uh, regression coefficients test because one means oh, among the these kind of regression regression formula in here we only testing about the co uh, like a uh, beta four which is the regression coefficients for the that cubic powered variable and then by using the linear hypothesis test in the cubic model we can actually hypothesis matrices uh, by using these matrices. We can actually try to testing the which one is the highly significant or not. Okay. And then, and then here, and then at the bottom, here is the, here is the result. So it actually calculates about the this kind of a regression uh, app test, you know? So in here, degree of freedom is the two, cause uh, we only testing about the uh, quadratic and cubic uh, parameters. So we have a two degree of the freedom for the testing the parameter. And then uh, this is the difference to the app statistics in this case. And then uh, uh, 37.691 at the, at the degree of freedom is two, is the highly, highly significant, like a p-value is a very significant. That means actually the second one actually assumes that about the cubic regression model, right? In this case. So that means according to the, our app test, like a coefficient covariance matrix test, second model, which is the cubic regression model actually fits much better than the quadratic model. So that means instead of the doing the quadratic model, we have to choose the cubic model in this case. But still I'm gonna kind of raise this kind of thing, uh, uh, some of the questions 
when we choosing the cubing model compared to the quadratic. Because the cubing model actually, when you draw the graph line, sometimes maybe we can have a, this might be the quadratic line, which is still also nonlinear and then complicated. And then a cubic line is look like this, okay? This is a quadratic and this is a cubic line, you know? Cubic line is much more complicated to the quadratic line. And, and then at the same time, what is the bad about, bad about the cubic is, it is uh, increases in some phases and then it decreases in the bottom and then it also increases again. You know, so that means compared to the quadratic, cubic is a much less prediction power of the regression model. Quadratic model also has a very weak, weak predictive power because the quadratic and cubic is just only kind of a useful when we actually try, our goal is kind of a just kind of a evaluating the, our current observations like this. Okay, maybe our goal is uh, just kind of a, a assessment of the of the nonlinear relationship among the observations. That means maybe quadratic and cubic gonna be okay, just only only for the like uh, for the assessment, or maybe just kind of a evaluation evaluating the relationship between X and Y just, just for the within our observation. So that means our observation is all we can get in this case. That means we can thinking about the quadratic and cubic, but the problem is Whenever we have a different kind of a set of the new observation like this, quadratic and cubic is a very poor prediction power. Okay, because of the, the thing that I wanted to talk about here is a kind of like a, in case of the machine learning kind of a perspectives. By for for the using using the using the regression model from the machine learning perspectives, because uh, using the regression linear regression model or regression model for the for the predictive predictive purposes. In that case, we have to be very careful about the choosing the quadratic and cubic model because of the, these kind of a linear relationship does not successfully predict the, our new data set, you know? Quadratic and cubic is a kind of like a, quite like a weak prediction power. It is a quite good for the, when we have a, focusing on the, when we have a evaluating the variation of the observation. But in case of the predictive purposes, it is very, very cautious to choosing these kind of nonlinear relationships. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions so far? Anything? No, I, I think it's it's clear. It's good. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Because because I, I just explain this one as a more like a little bit expand our expanding our discussion about the machine learning perspectives, okay? That's the what I wanted to do. And then uh, what the linear hypothesis function did is like this, like, uh, like uh, our hypothesis matrix is another matrix is for this. And then uh, here is the set of the, our parameter. And then the only thing is we only, only testing about the re uh, regression coefficients for the quadratic, and cubic cubic regression coefficients and then the testing that uh, that actually has a uh, has a uh, more than zero values not uh, not equal to the zero to testing the null hypothesis okay so that's the kind of thing okay and then let's move 
down to the here. And then uh, here is uh, what I actually answer to the Abdul to question, uh, Abdul, Abdul's questions. Because uh, in here, how we can determine that this kind of a polynomial is uh, use the sequential testing, which is uh, these four steps. Okay. Yeah, it is very interesting one. Yeah. And then the first one is uh, we just estimate the polynomial model for some maximum value of R. So that means maybe we can say about the, just the testing the, our cubing model. And then we have to set up the, our R, uh, R matrices, which is a C0100, which is the linear C0010, like a quadratic one. C0001 is the cubic. We making this this matrices, and then by using the linear hypothesis functions, we can testing this model by using the F test, right? And then F test is gonna be show us about the three model, and then we can allows us to the testing the this kind of a chi square, right? Those things can be repeated again and again and again. Okay. That's the, how it works to find out the best polynomial model. If we have to represent, we have to represent uh, those learning relationships among the, our observations. So it is uh, actually a trial error kind of a process. You know, so yeah, it's like it's a it's it's somehow a tedious <laughs> process. Yeah, <you> know? <laughs> yeah, right. Because yeah. you know, in in practice, regression model or whatever you model you have is modeling process, modeling and analysis or something is a key trial error things, man. Because uh, just kind of a combination of the variable and then I keep testing about the validity of the damn model until we get the final result, you know? We just keep repeating the doing that. Sometimes we, delete, we deleted some of the variable for the model. Sometimes it does not work very well based on the, our data. We have to add in more data, more observation or more variable into our table, data table to get the better model. And then keep combining the, those kind of variable is the what we do yeah because in here actually we only use the kind of a three or four variable at most but the thing is when we actually do with the regression model or some kind of a complicated regression uh, analysis you sometimes use more than 20 or 30 variable in one model depending on the quality of the data or quality of the observation, uh, data observation you have, you know? And then among the, those kind of a 20 variables, there is a whole different kind of a combination can be possible. So in that case, what we can do is uh, try to keep trial error. There is also a lot of functions we already, we already covered in the previous chapter, like uh, for example, like if we have a full model, full model of the 20, 20 independent variable, in that case, how we can optimize these two, this model, we actually have a step function, right? To get the minimum, minimum AIC or BIC factor uh, value. This step function actually allows us to get the regression, regression equations that gives us the minimum AIC or ICAN inferior criterion fact value or BIC value. This one gonna be the what we actually do. And also in case of the, like this, we also have a nonlinear kind of a relationships needs to be tested. We have to using the, using the all of the these approaches like a linear hypothesis functions. 
and then using the poly functions to get to testing the regression coefficients. So these are the kind of a basic basic strategy, and then there is also a lot of uh, functions that are gives us the more effective way to get the optimal model. But still, in in practice, when we try to develop our regression model or nonlinear regression model, it is a matter of uh, combining the whole different kind of a variable under the, our research context or according to the our uh, objective research objectives. You know, so that's the how it works. So that's the reason why it takes time. <laughs> we have to keep combining the, our test. <laughs> so that's the, our things, man. Okay. So and then let's move to the next one. Do you have any questions so far? Anything? I'm good. Thank you. Okay, so now we can we can talk about the okay. Now we have a cubic or quadratic model. So how we can how can we interpret the, those nonlinear regression models? This is very very important. Fact, important, right? It is easy for us to get the co regression coefficients for the cubic or quadratic regression model, but it is very difficult to interpret the, how we can interpret those things. Actually, in here, about the key concept 8.1 is a pretty complicated. What actually tells us, tell these things is about is uh, by using the differentiation uh, process. We can actually calculate, we can actually thinking about thinking about the, our regret, how we can interpret our regression coefficients, okay? But, but actually, what, what I wanted to suggest in here is more slightly a different idea, okay? So I'm gonna try to take this one as an example. So in case of the increase of the district of the our income from the 10 to 11 and 40, 40 to 41, in this case, it says about the difference is the slope is the 2.96 in the as a regression coefficients. And the difference is y head is the second case is the 0 0.04. What, this, what does this one tell us is assuming that we have a graph like this, okay? This is the income. And saying that this is the score, okay? Gotcha. And then assuming that we have uh, this kind of a relationship, for example, after, after feeding the, our model, which is the quadratic relationship, right? So what we actually do here is maybe in, in here, in this case, like a 10 to 11, which means like a, at the bottom here, 10, assuming that this one is a 10 and this one is a 11 in this case. And then what this difference actually tells us is the this slope, this linear, linear slope between the 10 and 11, okay? And then when we say about the 40 and 41, what does the difference tell us is this one is a 40 and this is a 41. And then this is the linear line slope. That's the point, uh, that's the point four, four, four to four is about. So in here, in this regression slope is the 2.962. And then this one is a 0.424 as a slope, okay? Does that understand what you said, what I just said? And then that's the reason why we have to, inter it is a pretty complicated about the quadratic model because uh, depending on the how, where we have to choose for the regression uh, slope, it actually changes over time, right? So in here it actually says about the, between 10 to 11 and 40 to 41, right? What if we actually 
in case of the 11 month, when we try to close to the our next value is the close to the 10. That means it is about the our kind of a kind of a marginal changes. Like uh, here is a 10. And then and then when the next value is the close to the one, so that means this this bandwidth window is uh, keeps smaller and smaller and smaller to get the linear slope. That actually uh, in the geo uh, geometrically that actually means about the like a tangent line like this, just uh, just the passing through the that value. It is like a is it is that correct like a asymptotic asymptotic line? Is that correct? It just uh, move to the it just the passing through the this this value. And then in case of the 40, assuming that the, this next value is the key closer to the 40, infinitively, that's the thing for the, this asymptotic line going to be produced. That's the, that's the point 404 is about, uh, not the 404. That, that line actually has uh, some kind of asymptotic line value, and then uh, that's the that's the changing of the these these things, these line things. So what I wanted to tell you is here is a kind of like a difference differentiation functions formula. So that means like a test score. When we say about the test score is a six point or seven point three plus 3.85 over income plus uh, minus 0 0.4023 income square. In this case, when we try to dif differentiations to this equation is test square, uh, test square changes is about, okay, when we try to differentiation, constant is gonna be zero, right? And then the income is that this one gonna be deleted, and then a 3.85 minus 0 0.0423 multiply two and multiply income. Okay, I'm gonna write down at the top. So when we differentiate it, this one to get to the this kind of a this kind of uh, marginal changes, like a, like a, to get to the asymptotic line for the each value. That means changing to the test score equals 3.85 minus 0 0.0423 multiplied by two multiplied by income, which means our slope Our slope value is a kind of a, these kind of a relationships. That means income increases. The, the changing of the test score is the decreasing. That means the slope line is the less, less, less steeper when we get to the higher, higher income value changes. That's the how this 0 0.3 is about. Does that understand what I'm just saying? Do you know do, do you know about the concept of the differentiation, right? Yeah. I yeah, I think that you guys you guys learn the maybe algebra or maybe calculus courses, you actually learn about the learn about the differentiations. Right, because uh, what I, yeah, what I just uh, tell you in here is uh, kind of uh, try to get to the, this kind of a something line. It is a kind of like, uh, limited. Our income is a uh, close uh, is uh, close to the ten. What's the our our f y f in function of the income gonna be? 
for the better one. That's the, how we can get to the, these kind of uh, asymptotic line is about. And then when we differentiation of the law functions, we can get the, this kind of a linear line. And then that linear line actually gives us about the changing into the slope depending on to the income. That's the reason why in the lower income, just only small changes gonna give us to the quite big changes about the scoring. But when the when do you have a high income, just a small changing about the income does not give us to the higher score because the slope is a much less steeper than to the previous low income one. That's the how we can interpret about the that uh, polynomial regression functions. Okay. Any questions so far? Anything? So, so in some way, in the quadratic model, expected change of the of the test, the change of the test square is the uh, between from 10 to 11 is the 2.96 point, which is a uh, quite a lot of changes. But when we have a uh, income from the 40 and 41 is the only 0.42, which is the uh, less changes due to the slope of slope is the uh, changing less, less deeper. Okay. That's the thing of the polynomial is about. So next one is uh, kind of uh, how we can try to do the log, log transformation and the uh, linear log model, log regression. So I think there is already 959 here. So I think that I can, I'm going to cover the rest of the chapter maybe next week. Is it, is it okay for you guys? That works for me. Yeah, sure. Sure, it works for me. Yeah. Do I, do I explain the contents too slowly or is it okay for you guys? It's no, good. It's okay. I think it's fine like this. Yeah. Okay. How about Gus? How about you, Gus? It's, it's good. It's very thorough and you're easy to follow. Oh, okay. So yeah, cause so that's the reason why that's the main objective of uh, this one. Cause uh, learn, as I can say, this one is uh, the only chapter we actually deal with the uh, linear regression in depth. And then, and then the linear regression is a uh, very, very important because we, this is actually what we usually see in the normal case. So, but the thing is, it is, a, it is actually very hard to interpret about the, what's the implication of the, of the regression coefficient for the cubic or quadratic. So we have to study this one a little bit further in this chapter. And then we have to understand this one very well. That actually allows us to develop the, our knowledge of the linear regression or regression modeling a little bit more, much further, I guess. And then I also, when I studying this chapter, I also found this chapter very interesting because I also found, uh, found what I missed so far. So this one is a very interesting chapter. And then uh, that's the reason why I'm gonna also try to share what I found to, with you by explaining this chapter a little bit slowly. So that we so that we can also have the same page. Okay, so maybe next week we're gonna try to start to the log uh, transformation of the linear regression, and then I'm gonna cover rest of the chapter like uh, eight point three and eight point four. Okay, and then does anyone gonna click the end button end chat? Maybe I will type the end. Okay. Yeah.